Hello, welcome to my world of stitch textiles. We're going to look at ideas for inspiration today, which can be found in the world all around us, whether it's in your back garden, whether it's on the landscape, whether it's out at sea, whether you're on travels and on your holidays. So we're going to look at some ideas and I will share some examples of work of my own designs uh, that might give you some inspiration. Uh, my book, Layer, Paint and Stitch, will give you lots of ideas of different techniques you might use that we'll be looking at uh, and give you some projects that you might like to work with as well. Ideas. You might be lucky enough to go and see a coral reef. Wonderful textures that you can find all around. If you're on the beach, you can have a look at rusty surfaces, wonderful textures, rusty groins, rusty walls, rusty gates. So you can get lots of wonderful textures by looking there. Travels. If you're lucky enough to travel around, then looking at details of things out and about on there. So these are from some lanterns in Hoi An uh, in Vietnam. Architecture. I love working with architecture and they're wonderful shapes, whether it's doors, windows, arches, small carved details. So lots of different places that you can find inspiration. Nature, natural forms. So details, looking in at details of images rather than just taking in the whole thing. So here we've got details of a butterfly wing. So just looking at pattern and texture. Your designs and your ideas don't have to be representational. You're taking a design source and then you can play around with it so that you can then create an interesting design. So that's a few ideas to think about inspiration and where those ideas will come from. Recording your ideas. So a sketchbook is very, very important. Uh, whether you're drawing, whether you're painting, uh, whether you're cutting images out of uh, designs, cutting them out of oops, cutting them out of sketchbooks, uh, cutting them out of magazine cuttings. The internet, you can find resources for there. Uh, on a recent trip to India, um, these are some patterns and ideas that, um, that I, I sketched when I was there, uh, ready to work into with some designs afterwards. You need to plan. So drawing out your ideas, planning them on paper, deciding the size and scale that you're working on. So the design is important, whether you're working on a small scale or a very large scale. Uh, everything can be enlarged up, it can be reduced down. Photocopiers are wonderful these days, we can get lots of different ideas through from there. You need to think about your colour schemes. I quite often will work with just a limited colour scheme, but having a colour wheel uh, is very, very useful and you can start to look at different shades of colour, how the colours might work. So they're working with them and then you can decide whether you're going to use complementary colours as highlights, which would be opposite. So a colour wheel in your workbox is a really useful tool. Thinking about techniques. So there are so many different techniques out there that you can work with. Uh, I specialise in freehand machine embroidery, but I incorporate lots of other techniques as well. You might apply fabrics. You might like hand stitching machine stitching, combination of both. There are lots of resist techniques on the market where you can mark out areas, paint them, so you get a resist effect. Painting the fabric. So lots of fabric paints on the market. So many, many different types. Um, the the water-based fabric pigment I use um, is uh, in, um, designed for screen printing. Uh, so they're a very, very thick pigment come in a wonderful range of very strong, vibrant colours, but all your colours can be mixed to give you uh, the colour palette that you want to work with uh, on your fabric. The beauty of using a fabric paint is that the fabric's left very soft to handle afterwards. So you can use that on clothing, garments, as well as for pictures, book covers, wall hangings. And how you use your textile work, your embroideries that you're working on, uh, your stitch textile designs, it can be used for anything. So I work as an artist and create wall hangings and pictures for sale, uh, but you can embroider onto garments, furnishings, book covers, 
Uh, so a whole range of different items. You might make jewellery working with soluble fabrics. So a whole range of things out there. But the inspiration for all of this is all around us. Whether you're just looking out in the back garden, uh, whether you're up on the downs, I live close to the South Downs, which is uh, wonderful from a landscape point of view. Uh, whether you're traveling around the world, uh, looking at different cultures and patterns and textiles that are out there. So thinking about all those different ideas. Uh, I'm going to share and just share some of the uh, techniques that I use. And I like working with different textured fabrics. So I like to work with texture. So I'm building up lots of surface texture. So calico will be my base fabric. And then I'm just looking around for a whole selection. So silk noil has a lovely texture. Dupion silk you might use. Uh, various cottons. This is a quite a medium weight, coarsely woven cotton. Uh, mat, uh, cotton batting that quilters would use as an interlining. It's got a lovely soft finish. The fabrics I prefer to use are all natural fabrics uh, and they need to be pre-washed before you use them because if you're painting or damp stretching your embroidery at the end of a piece of work or washing a garment that you're applying this all to, uh, you don't want the fabrics to shrink. So make sure you've washed all the dressing out of any uh, unshrunk fabrics, loom state fabrics, uh, or by fabrics that have already got the dressing washed out of them. Uh, little bits of lace, net, broderie anglaise, some wonderful French laces I've picked up when I've been teaching out uh, with crafty retreats in France. And we go to the uh, markets there, you can get some wonderful uh, textures there. It might be all got garments. It's a wonderful way of recycling uh, your fabrics. So this is a design, this is one of the projects in the book, then it's inspired by uh, some flowers in the meadow at West End College where I teach regularly for residential courses um, and the buttercups and daisies were in full flower on one of my visits and this is the resulting design from the project in the book. So I'm going to show you the process and the stages that I go through to create that design. I start by selecting a range of different textured fabrics, as I've just mentioned. Uh, not too many, um, but balancing those fabrics as I go. So I've got a balance of those fabrics across the design. I can also incorporate little bits of uh, lace and textiles. Initially, I would just stitch those fabrics down and I'm just using a white or cream cotton thread. Again, a natural thread. So when it comes to the painting, the thread and the fabrics will all take on the colour of the paint. So I've stitched the fabrics down and then I'm still working in whites and creams but adding some more texture. So here I've added some little flower trims, some little bits of broderie anglaise. I'm stitching with a thicker yarn, so a heavier weight yarn you can use in the machine uh, by you putting it in the bobbin and working upside down. So that's cable stitch that we'll work with. Then I decide on my colour scheme and I will paint it. So mixing up my paints, I want the colours to merge here so that the colours of the blues and the greens are all merging in together to give myself a background for my meadow. Once I've painted that background, I then have fun starting to stitch into it and start to build up my design. So I'm building up foliage, lots of grasses, seed heads, and then the buttercups and daisies are going to be stitched in as well. So I get to the final piece where I filled my background. I'm looking at balancing the design all the time. So whatever your starting point, make sure you're balancing what it is that you're working with on there. So that's a little bit about the technique. So all the samples I'm going to be showing you, most of them, are using that technique um, within it. So architecture, I mentioned I like working with architecture. I love doorways, windows, arches. So this is a window, sorry, a doorway uh, down at Arundel Cathedral in West Sussex. And it's a wonderful door, wonderful uh, hinges. So beautiful hinges on the door, uh, little gargoyles on the side, little carved faces, lots of interesting textures coming through. So having pieced and layered my fabric, so I'm layering the fabrics according to uh, the vertical nature of the window, of the doorway and the area surrounding. 
and then my colour scheme I painted. Now in order to decide how I'm going to paint that colour scheme, I like to work with paper collage. So here I have my the tracing of my door. So the tracing I will then put onto a background fabric and I can piece and layer my different coloured papers before going into my painting with the fabric. So I can move those fabrics or the papers around and see through them so I can see how I'm getting the proportions of my designs. So there I've got the paper collage and this is my, I'll hold them up alongside each other. So this would be my reference when I come to paint the background. I've chosen to go more for a grey green in the paint rather than the blue that I use for the uh, paper collage. Having the right colour paper um, is possibly not um, you know, going to happen unless you colour your papers yourselves. Uh, but keeping a store of paper is always really useful. Um, and then you can tear the papers around, move them around until you're happy with your design. But that gives me the reference for my painting. And then I start to stitch into it with my architectural designs and anything I want to be very precise, I will transfer the design from the reverse. And that technique is explained in my book. Uh, so it's a good way. I don't like to use fabric markers on fabric at all. Uh, and so I'm using this transfer method from the reverse uh, with stitch. And then once I've stitched the outline, I will continue to embellish on the, floor, on the front of the design and just working with very limited colours. So I've got the terracotta and I've got the grey green. Uh, architecture wise as well, Venice um, is a place that I've visited and just love the textures of the walls. So the crumbling walls, not very nice for Venice but you've just got the crumbly texture. So I'm not sure if you can see clearly. Unfortunately, this is a glazed piece, so it's not quite so clear. Uh, but my website has got images um, that you'll be able to look more closely. Um, and here I've got looking at ways of creating wonderful texture uh, within the background and then stitching the facade uh, for these wonderful windows and shapes that we've got there. So that's one looking at uh, Venice and looking at a Venetian design. Uh, I've got a window here. This is using coloured fabric. So rather than painting my background, I've chosen uh, a range of coloured pre-printed fabrics that I can also piece and layer. And I like to tear the fabrics as much as possible. So the torn edges become part of the texture. And here I live down in Sussex and Brighton Pavilion uh, appears quite frequently in my design work. So it's using these different colourways and different designs that come through. So architecture gives lots of uh, inspiration from there. The beauty of piecing and layering the fabric first and then painting it means that all the fabrics will take on the colour and the thread that you've used initially will also take on the colour of the paint. And even if you were to paint the whole thing one colour, one shade of colour, you'll get tonal variations because different fabrics will absorb the paint in different ways. So, there. so looking again at more inspiration, landscape. So landscape is all around us. And if you're lucky enough to uh, be out in the countryside. So here I've got um, a landscape design from the downs, inspired by the downs. And colours don't need to be representational. So I'm just taking autumnal colours for this piece and I'm taking the cooler wintry colours for this landscape here. But wonderful sort of seeing trees along tree lines, along the headlines of the, uh, the top of the downs uh, coming across. So looking at landscapes um, in that form there. Flowers, so natural forms generally. Flowers in the garden, flowers at the garden centre if you're not lucky enough to have your own garden, window boxes, uh, gardens that you visit, so National Trust gardens and lots of, lots of other gardens. So here are two designs of uh, oxeye daisies. So I'm taking very similar images that I've drawn and sketched, uh, but I'm giving a different colour background. So my background here, uh, getting different shades, and by painting your fabric as the background, you get wonderful variations of colour. Um, with pre-printed fabrics you're a bit more restricted but it will work equally well with either you don't have to paint the fabric um, you can use coloured fabric as your background 
and then building up in layers. So it's the layering that's really important, whether you're layering fabric, whether you're layering uh, fabric, then paint and then stitch. So it's all this build up um, and experimenting. It really is a case of experimenting with as many ideas as you can, um, thinking about through onto there. Um, foreign visits, foreign travels. So I was lucky enough to visit India uh, just before lockdown and collected some wonderful textiles. So the textiles out there, you've got, you know, the women sitting there doing wonderful hand stitching, whether it's canthus stitching or this wonderful braided couching stitching. And these are fragments of garments, um, which I collected, but keeping in my resource box um, and I'm working on India themes uh, that will be developed out of this, um, these ideas. Uh, here again, another panel from a garment. So this was a wonderful, I just love the fragmentation of these. Uh, shisha mirrors uh, stitched in, uh, little bits of sequins and an abundance of hand stitching. When you look at the stitching on the back, it shows you really how much detail the hand stitching um, has gone into this piece of panelling for a garment. So collecting some of those. And this is a piece of canthus stitching. So a scarf panel, again, all hand stitched. So the hand stitching on quite a fine cotton fabric for this one. So these are all pieces that are there uh, to give inspiration as we are working Walk through onto that. Okay. So those are uh, different ways of thinking of India or there. Um, another series that I work on um, and have been working on is I incorporate maps into my designs. Uh, so I transfer print maps onto fabric. Let's find my samples on there. So I transfer print the maps onto fabric and then they can be incorporated into my designs. So here's a map that I've transfer printed onto a piece of calico. So I've used freezer paper as a carrier to feed the fabric through on the inkjet printer. And I've treated the fabric first to make sure it accepts the ink so that it becomes a permanent. So that's the transfer on there. I can also print onto very fine fabrics. There's a map on a very fine muslin on that. And then I've incorporated it in with this design. And this was a, a sample piece of a design uh, inspired by the wonderful windmills down at Cartagena and San Pedro del Pinatar uh, in Spain, where I taught for many years uh, and running classes out there. And so this is showing the area that we were working in. So we've got the different areas coming through onto there. So that's incorporating the maps. And very often I'll incorporate architectural features in with the map. So it can be something very personal um, that people can work with um, on there. Uh, the what I have in behind me here um, is a piece of work that's my my life journey. Um, I designed this piece for an exhibition a while ago, and it's just taking the natural forms, uh, so textured landscapes. It's an illustration of different elements that I've worked on. Um, from a very early age, I was making garments, so fashion design. I've got some dress patterns that are stitched in over here. Uh, I've got architecture. Um, illustrating the, my architectural elements that I'm working with, so Brighton Pavilion and a map of Brighton, uh, some very traditional hand embroidery, so long and short stitch. So I, I learned very traditional hand embroidery stitches in my teens. Uh, trees, lace, machine embroidered lace. Uh, so all these things, and um, for machine embroidered lace, looking at pebbles on the beach, looking at different textures that you could create from there. Uh, so that's an illustration um, bringing through those um, those different elements that are coming through onto um, onto that. And then in recent times, I have created a lockdown diary. So this is all memories of the world around us, and the world around us has been quite different this year. Um, so I decided to record some of that. Uh, within my diary. So I have um, the, the opening page. These are still loose pages at the moment. They will be made into a book. Uh, hand washing. So obviously a lot of this is all still very, very relevant today. 
making scrubs. So I spent quite a few weeks making hospital scrubs as part of a group um, in Sussex and machining with those. Mask making. And again, we're all wearing masks uh, at this moment in time. Hand clapping. The Thursday nights we were out on the doorsteps clapping uh, for the NHS. The wonderful rainbows appearing everywhere. Um, children painting the rainbows and putting them into their windows. Uh, so a good reminder and keeping memory for the NHS. Food shortages, toilet roll shortages. So all memories of things that at the moment we will remember, but in a few years time, um, perhaps these, these will become, hopefully they'll become distant memories, but it's nice to have a record. I loved enjoying our daily walks up on the downs. We're lucky enough to walk out from home and go up onto the downs. So recording uh, as walking up onto the downs and just wonderful seeing the unfolding of nature um, every day out there. So we know that uh, spring comes and things start to come into flower. You get the, the buds, you get the leaves coming out, uh, you get the flowers and the blossom, but to actually witness it every day um, was really quite a, quite a, a wonderful experience on there and of course social media um, you're watching this today um, and social media has been uh, a steep learning curve for everybody um, but lots of different ways that social media um, has been people's uh, lifesaver um, being in at home uh, so working with all of those different elements um, has been uh, you know been quite good to work with so I hope that's given a little taster of different things uh, around and about um, oh, here we are. I've got just a few of my India series that I'm starting to work on. So little samples, uh, looking at different ways um, of interpreting some of the patterns and textures of the textiles that I bought and found in India. Uh, these were some pieces that um, some of the uh, guests that were on the trip with me, um, I gave them a, a background piece. And when we were block printing, uh, they block printed onto a piece of fabric and then they were hand stitching into it. And again, looking at the wonderful canther stitching, incorporating that with a bit of block printing. So lots of ideas to come uh, with the India inspired uh, holiday, um, which I hope will turn into courses for some of you to work with um, on there. Um, just quickly on the machine. Um, so I just use a basic domestic sewing machine, any basic machine you can use for the freehand stitching and lots of doodling. To set up your machine, you just replace your normal sewing foot with a darning foot, free motion quilting foot, free hand embroidery foot, they're all the same thing. They're on a spring and that allows you to work on your fabric and it grips the fabric as you're stitching. You also need to lower or cover the teeth or the feed dog on your machine. If you can't lower them, if you've got an older version machine or some uh, machines, stick a bit of masking tape over them uh, or you may have a darning plate. So any of those things will, will give you. The machine then becomes a drawing tool um, and you can stretch a piece of fabric um, to practice to start with in an embroidery hoop and literally doodle. So just as you doodle on a piece of paper, you can doodle with your sewing machine. So that's the technique I will use for my machine stitching, working into my layered and textured backgrounds. Um, I do have a range of uh, kits. So these kits, there's a doorway one here, and this sample, just as I showed you with the meadow, shows you the different stages of piecing and layering, stitching down, painting the background, transferring the image from reverse, and then working in and embellishing the design. And there are seven different kits um, that you can have a look at on my website. Um, and that will give you um, fabrics and instructions to create your own design. The paints I use, I also sell on my website. Uh, so do have a look if you're um, thinking of buying. And obviously it shows, uh, when I'm at shows exhibiting, I will have those for sale uh, and copies of my book as well. Um, I hope that you will look around you and the world around you, um, however small it might be at the moment, um, hopefully will expand. But photographs you've got, looking on the internet to get as many ideas as you can, um, think about your design and really experiment. Have fun, 
uh, play with your fabrics, play with your textiles, play with stitching. There are no rules that have to be stuck to. Um, just go for anything that you feel in the mood for, thinking about balancing everything as you go. Um, I have a range of courses um, listed on my website. Uh, I'm hoping to do some Zoom ones um, in the near future, so do keep an eye on that or email me um, and I will put you on a, a list for details. Um, and keep up to date with, um, with my um, images and courses that will be, as I say, on the website for you to look at. So I hope that's given you a few ideas and some inspiration uh, today uh, and I hope to see some of you on courses perhaps in the future. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.